Now for the exponential function and its graph. So the basic form for that is, or oh, it looks like that. We have a base with an exponent. Okay, that's why it's called the exponential graph because now my input is in the exponent and this will have a coefficient. Okay, or might have a coefficient other than one. And then we can maybe add something to this whole thing. So you remember that when I add something, it moves it up or down. And then maybe I can affect my my x as well. I can subtract or add, uh, not the same, p. I can move this. And remember, when I add something or subtract something from x, that might move it to the left and to the right. Okay, so from here you can see we've got three parameters. The first parameter is that b, that's the base. b is the base and c is the coefficient. In other words, whatever is in front of the base coefficient, how do you spell it? Double A? Probably not. Or maybe coefficient. Okay, let's just spell it like that. There's a coefficient. Okay. And now what Q will be later on, and you will see that this is definitely true, Q will represent the vertical asymptote. Uh, sorry, horizontal asymptote. Almost got that wrong. Horizontal asymptote. And it's difficult to give a name to, uh, sorry, uh, to P okay because p is merely a, a shift left or right so p is simply left or right shift okay and from this you'll notice that these two determine shape and those two obviously determine position Okay, so we have direction or shape and we have position. So let's go and have a look at what type of shapes can we get. The position is easy, easy. that's just moving the shape up and down. Okay, well the most basic shape looks like that. That's the most basic shape. And this shape I'll get when B is greater than 1. Now one thing you'll notice about B is B will always be positive. B will always be a positive number. Okay. Um, but there's two things. B might be greater than 1 or B might be smaller than 1. Now when will B be, what will B look like if it's smaller than 1? Well, then it will have this shape. And you can just watch the video on reflections to see why that is the case. Okay, this is a reflection. Okay, so B is smaller than 1. Then I see I'm going to infinity here but on the negative side of the x-axis or you can rather look at when is it approaching the x-axis okay it's approaching the x-axis on the positive side of x and when is it approaching the x-axis when b is negative 1 on the negative side of the x-axis okay those are two shapes but for both of these shapes my coefficient is positive and you'll notice that therefore both is on the positive side of the x-axis. What about if my coefficient is negative? Obviously now I'm doing the same thing but I'm going on the negative side. I'm reflecting in the x-axis. So this one when b is smaller than 1 and c is smaller than 0, I'll still approach the x-axis on its positive side but I will be tending to negative infinity instead of positive infinity. If B is bigger than 1 and C is smaller than 1, so uh, let, an example is something like 2x, now B is bigger than 1 and C must be negative, so let's just make it negative 1. Okay, That thing will look like this, but reflected, so that would look like that. Okay, there you go. That is the type of shapes. Let's just look at basic positioning. Okay, so let's take the basic position and move the basic position around a bit. So there's my basic one. In other words, this one, B is bigger than 1 and C 
is be given zero. So that's typically something like two to the power of x. Okay, that's a basic example. Okay, now what positions do we have? Well, first we have this horizontal asymptote, even though mine looks a little bit downhill, but we'll get about that for now. The horizontal asymptote in this case is x is equal to z, not x, y. y is equal to zero. Okay, now you remember what I said here is that the horizontal asymptote is this q value. This q value, but this one doesn't have a q value, does it? This one it doesn't have a q value. No, it does, it's just zero. Okay, it's got no q value or zero q value. That's why the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to zero. Okay, now what about that point? What is that point? The x intercept, the y intercept is when x is equal to zero. So it's quite easy to calculate. So just two to the power of zero is equal to one. So that is at one. Okay. So obviously when c comes in front here, so let's look at something like. 3 times 2 to the power of x. Now if x is 0, it would be 3 times 1, so then it would have been 3. So t, uh, c also determines the magnitude, like how, how big this thing is. Okay. Now um, let's just look at positioning. How can this thing move up and down? So obviously if we have something like q plus, let's make this one uh, plus also 2, let's also make it 2, not too big, then it means that my horizontal asymptote that used to be 0 will now move up 2 spaces, 1, 2. Okay. So now it will be here at 2, and this whole graph will just move up. And instead of cutting at 1, it will now cut at 3. And this y is equal to 2 will be my horizontal asymptote. Okay, and if I have something like um, fx, sorry, this is quite messy, but I'm sure you can follow me. If I have something like fx is equal to 2 to the power of x minus 1, I seem to be messing with my x here. And do you recall? playing with this, x moves it left and right. Okay, so if I subtract, it means things are going to happen slower. Okay, so it's going to move to the right. Things are going to take longer to happen. So this point, instead of being the point 0, 1, it will become the point 1, 1. And notice, we didn't move it up or down. If there was something here, it would have moved up and down. My horizontal asymptote is still zero. So this is it's just the same graph moving up a little bit to this side. Okay, and now you can get some creative way of calculating what is the new intercept. Obviously, it's less than one somewhere there. Okay, we must make x equal to zero. So two to the power 0 minus 1 gives me 2 to the power negative 1 that gives me a half so the new intercept is a half cool I hope you get it it's not that difficult um, let's look at some examples